We've customized our phones, we've customized our computers, and now with all the buzz of the latest tech product launches, we are so back, baby. Today, we're designing next level custom wallpapers, desktop backgrounds, widgets, and so much more, but this time using Adobe Photoshop's powerful AI tools. If you haven't noticed, I've been using Photoshop for literally years and I'm quite obsessed, as you've seen, especially with their generative fill feature, which has helped me make some pretty crazy designs and bring pretty much any creative vision to life. I mean, you can change your outfit, backgrounds, and now there are even more new features, which I'm about to show you, that truly make creating pretty much anything possible now. So big shout out to Adobe Photoshop for sponsoring today's video. I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I create my aesthetic backgrounds and icons. And for funsies, I'll show you how I use it every day as a content creator, whether it's making iconic Instagram photos, and yes, they are iconic, cleaning up YouTube thumbnails, or even testing out room decor in my new apartment before I actually commit, because commitment's hard. <laughs> so grab your devices, grab a snack, and let's get started. All right, we're gonna start with wallpaper because who doesn't want an aesthetic phone or computer background? Nobody. So first things first, I'm going to open Adobe Photoshop 2025, the newest version. And if you haven't tried Photoshop before, there's no time like the present, trust me. If you wanna mess around with the features that I show you today, which you do, then you can sign up for a free trial and install Photoshop. So click the link in my description to get started. You won't regret it. Okay, so we're gonna just start a new file and you're gonna to wanna to look up the dimensions of whatever computer you have so that you can just type in the custom dimensions right here. So the first kind of wallpaper I wanna show you how to make is kind of that like gradient aura wallpaper. I feel like those are super popular right now and just really vibey and clean. We have our blank canvas right here. We're just going to click on the gradient tool. You can do that by right clicking on the paint bucket gradient tool. So not only are there tons of presets, they have all sorts of color schemes already, but also you can make your own, which I'll show you in a second. These are the different shapes you can choose. I'll just start with the basic kind of circle one. Boom, it's that easy. <laughs> you can also reverse the colors. That's also very pretty. But I wanna do a custom color scheme. So I'm going to double click on this box right here and then click on this. I wanna do, let's do that. But I want to make the pink a little more bold. Boom, yeah, Barbie pink. The purple as well. Mm -hmm. I like that, cool. You could also do that or like that or like that, that. The possibilities are basically endless. And I always like to add noise because I think that looks kind of cool. Make sure your layer is highlighted and then you just go to filter, noise, add noise. Convert to smart object, woo, I like that. And there you have it. Let's export that bad boy. So now let's make a kind of collage style background. And I'm gonna use a new feature that I love called the frame tools. The frame tool basically allows you to draw placeholder frames that you can fill with images and like switch the images out without messing anything up. So we're literally just gonna click on the frame tool right here. You can either have it be an elliptic, elliptical, ellipsis, elliptical, an elliptical or a square. So I think I'm gonna have mine be kind of squares. So there are our frames. What we can do is literally just drag and drop photos into the frames. So we'll add some palm trees. With the frame tool highlighted, you can just double click the image and move it around or click V to actually transform the image. Some marble to this one. That's pretty sweet. So yeah, basically you can create any type of collage you want, which is really cool. Last year I made this vision board wallpaper that I thought was super cool. And hey, there's that same picture. So I really should make that my background. Okay, next, before we get into the super life-changing, mind-blowing AI tools, I wanna show you how to create custom desktop icons because that has been one of my favorite things to do. With Photoshop, you can just do it even easier than ever before, so let's do that. Okay, so I made this kind of folder icon template that I will actually link down below if you guys want just to make it easier. So what we're gonna do is just drag that template to Photoshop. It'll open it up like this. I wanna keep the shadow and highlights of this folder intact. So I'm just gonna go down to this button and do a gradient layer on top, click OK. Now I'm gonna right click on this and create a clipping mask. That basically makes it so that that layer only affects this folder. Now, if we click on the gradient like before, we can make this any color that we want, but you'll notice that it gets rid of the shadows and things. So before we do that, we just need to go up here to the blend mode and push overlay. Then when we choose gradients, it should actually 
show the highlights again. So this is really cool if you wanna make different kinds of folders and then I can keep changing this around. So then how you actually turn that into a desktop icon, you're gonna to wanna to open the folder that you saved, double click on that. You're going to go edit, copy. Then you want to right click on the folder that you wanna change it to, click get info, highlight this folder in the top and do edit, paste or command V. And there you have it. These don't have to be the shape of a folder. These can also be any type of icon that you want. So that's really cool. Next, let's make some widgets. One of my favorite things that you can do now on Photoshop is literally generate an image from scratch just by typing what you want. And we're able to do this with the new Adobe Firefly image model. So here's what we're gonna do. I have a square, I'm going to click generate image and up pops this dialog box. We can click on any of these to kind of understand what prompts were used to get these and then we can basically just type our own so i'm gonna say overhead shot of swimming pool filled with pink dollar bills we can choose whether we want it to look artsy or like a photo i'm gonna say photo click generate this is literally how fast it goes it's insane. And up pop three images completely from scratch. Now let's say you don't love all these, but you love one of them. Like I think I'm really feeling, mm, I'm liking this one a lot. If I wanna generate more similar results, I can click the three dots and then click generate similar. And it'll give me three more options that are very similar to this one. Let's see what it gives us. I love that. So honestly, I think that's pretty cool as is. I'm gonna export that as a potential widget. It just kind of feels, I don't know, inspiring. <laughs> Let's try another one. Pastel colored rainbow. We're gonna make this one artsy. One, two, and three. Those look so good, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Put some cool text on it. I mean, that's impressive. As you can see, it's just better at understanding and following your prompts so you can bring your vision to life with way more control and confidence in the results. All right, so now it's time to show you so many fun ways to edit photos, whether it's for Instagram, for profile pictures, for your website, and we're gonna really dive into the AI tools. Some are new, some have already been there, and they are so good. So first up, I'm sure you're familiar with the remove tool. You can easily get rid of any unwanted object by just brushing over it. Well, now a new feature has been introduced, automatic distraction removal. So with the normal remove tool highlighted, you're now able to see this find distractions drop down menu at the top. And here it gives you the option of removing wires and cables or people. So for this photo, we're just going to clean it up a bit. For Instagram, you can see that there are some cables in the sky. So we're going to choose the cables and wires function. And there we go, it automatically detected these wires and removed them so easily. Photo looks good to me. <laughs> so now let's try one with a lot of people in the background. So I'm going to select people and let it do its thing. All right, so as you can see, it's identified all the people in the background, though this one person isn't highlighted. So I'm just gonna brush over this person to include them in the selection like this. Then when I'm ready, I'll push the check mark and boom. There we go. I can even go back to the regular remove tool to clean up some of these things on the beach even more. But the fact that I removed all those people and Photoshop absolutely preserved the photo's integrity, depth, and complex details is beyond impressive. <laughs> So generative fill you already know for the most part, but I wanted to show you in the context of making a wallpaper. And I've already opened a document the same dimensions as my iPhone. So here we can just take the rectangular marquee tool and then I didn't give it any sort of prompt. So it should just fill in the backdrop with something similar to the photo. And as you can see, it does. This is definitely my favorite one. This is so pretty and I would love for this to be my iPhone background. All right, y'all, this may be by far the craziest feature and my favorite as you've obviously seen in previous posts, we can change my freaking clothes. Why not? So we're gonna make my casual outfit a little more fancy. Um, I'm thinking black leather, why not? Gotta give myself some matching pants or a skirt though, of course, duh. I mean, that's epic. The next new feature piggybacks off of a feature we already know and love, which is remove background, even though it has definitely seen some improvements. But now we get to actually generate a background. So Photoshop will completely generate a background for you from scratch. You can give it a prompt, you can import an image, whatever you want. So if you're looking for new photos for let's say your website or just social media, you can just digitally teleport pretty much anywhere you wanna be. I mean, that looks incredibly realistic and pretty cool. 
And finally, what if I told you you could use this feature on videos? Now let me tell you what I mean. Here's this talking clip of me against a white background and let's just say I wanna switch some things up. Boom, suddenly there's a window. I mean, that looks very realistic. No window, window, no window, window. Like if I want a desk makeover, instead of getting a new desk, I can just get a new desk. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you, AI. And lastly, as a little bonus, I just wanted to show you how truly versatile Photoshop is. I use it for pretty much everything. I just moved into a new apartment and I'm trying to plan out what furniture and decor that I want. And there's two ways I can do this. One is I can drag and drop images from actual stores and really easily manipulate them. But then I can also use generative fill to start to really imagine what the space can be filled with and get inspiration. It's amazing how easily it can come to life using Photoshop. And I even want to make some of my own custom art prints. I haven't had much time to actually think about what kind of art I want, but right off the top of my head, I thought, why not an F1 looking car in the sky? Point is you can help really any creative vision come to life. And I love that. Pretty cool, I know. And that concludes today's video. How'd you guys like it? AI is pretty insane, isn't it? Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're as excited about Photoshop and customizing all of your tech as I clearly am. So try Adobe Photoshop now by going to the link in my description and signing up for the free trial. They also have tons of tutorials and they have a help page and chat and everything to really support you on your journey. I mean it when I say this is really an all-in-one for me. I can do pretty much anything on here. So I highly encourage you guys to try it out. Let me know which feature you like the most and tag me in anything you guys create. I would love to see them. And with that, I'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.